We're not only telling you what's hot this week, but we're also telling you what's cold. Three up, three down starts right now. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic collection through community and integrity. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related videos on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. So we're going to go right into the three up portion of this show, where we are covering the three hot market trends in the comic community for this week, starting with Thunderbolts. Now there was rumor that Thunderbolts might be coming to Disney+. Plus especially with Baron Zemo coming into that whole Captain America and Falcon show. But everyone knows Incredible Hulk number 449 has never been a mystery. That book has kind of been popular. But what about Thunderbolts, Jack? Well, I have to be honest, Brian. This is one of those things where I sit and I go, you know, it's good to get in on things early. But as market prices are rising, I'd be leery because this is just a rumor. Um, and then this is kind of where we're going with internet rumors where – it's not taking much to spike the secondary market. So we're seeing across the board movement on Thunderbolts. You mentioned that uh, that 449 first appearance, but we're seeing movement on every and all Thunderbolts variant, especially those one in 50 variants from that 2014 Thunderbolts line, which I don't even imagine that would be the Thunderbolts team we'd see. That features Red Hulk and features uh, Punisher and Agent Venom and Deadpool. Um, there may be elements of that, uh, but you won't see that full cast. Electra as well as a part of that team. Um, but we're seeing those 1 in 50 Billy Tan variants hit record prices. We are seeing that 1 in 50 John uh, Tyler Christopher variant go up to about $350 from about 160 last month. And we are seeing um, that kind of vintage looking variant rise to over $100. So everything Thunderbolts is on the rise and that FOMO is certainly kicking in in the secondary market. Yeah, that's the only thing is about team books is you never know which team it's going to be since it's been multiple iterations. Because when like one of the Punisher books, they also had the beginning of a new Thunderbolts team. I think it was like Punisher 13 or something like that. But Thunderbolts is one of those teams that's been talked about I think probably since about 2013 you kept hearing that name brought up this book especially incredible hulk 449 you'll see that rise whenever thunderbolts get mentioned for mcu or tv or anything like that no doubt we are seeing those move and that's why it's hot this week the next market trend we're going to talk about is spider-man 2099 we've talked about 2099 titles recently on last call show we've talked about on the bolo show but 2099 everyone's talking about it i'm Full disclosure, I'm still not a fan, but people are talking about this book or series of books, right, Jack? Right. There's really two books that we're seeing pop off specifically. We're seeing that Amazing Spider-Man 365, that first preview appearance of Spider-Man 2099, as well as Spider-Man 2099 number one. And it's important to note that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 365 is just that, a preview. I don't think that the entire market is aware of that. It's kind of gotten deemed first appearance, which I'm honestly, I'm fine with. But it is a preview of Spider-Man 2099, number one. But those two books are hot right now. Spider-Man 2099, number one, is one of my favorite convention books. It's always sold all day for $10 to $15. Um, new, new collectors coming in the market. It's a must-have for a collection. Uh, and Amazing Spider-Man 365, while largely printed and one of those great kind of 90s foil covers, it is starting to hit about $20. Now, because it's so largely printed, you'll see certain outlier sales of like 7 or 8 bucks, but you'll you'll consistently see buy it now sales going off of near mint copies for about $20. And I think it's for a few reasons. You mentioned the publishing side with the fact that there's a lot of talk of 2099 everything with the 2099 reboot happening right here this month in November. But we're also hearing talk about Spider-Man 2099 as we now know that 2022 is when Spider-Verse 2 is on its way from Sony Pictures. The, obviously, the first one was a hit, and we know the post credit scene featured Miguel O'Hara coming and uh, kind of debuting in the Spider-Verse. So uh, we expect to see him get kind of a major role in the sequel. Right, major role in the sequel, but we also saw a lot of that speculation for the first movie with all these characters but then the movie came out and didn't carry the weight of some of the books that everyone was heavy on so no doubt to be in spider-verse because of that post-credit scene I, I definitely agree with you there but it's anxious to see of how big of a role it plays and then what those books do after the movie 
And then, of course, this Marvel 2099 series and event they got coming up. Then the last hot trend we're talking about for the comic book market right now is The Boys. We just saw season two just finished filming. Season one was phenomenal. I think it caught a lot of people off guard on how good it actually was. So there's a lot of people out there that didn't buy the comics or didn't read the comics that went back and started buying it up just to get their hands on it and to read the story. A lot of people want to read that comic to tell, hey, what's the difference from the book than the TV show? But season two wrapped. There's some heat on the boys again. Yeah, The Boys has a couple things going for it that other independent comic series don't. First off, as far as from the television side, the fact that they are moving so quickly from season one to season two is why you're not seeing an Umbrella Academy-esque lull. People have almost forgotten that Umbrella Academy was like the highest reviewed independent comic series that we've seen hit TV. And they've almost forgotten that because, number one, The Boys has been released since then, and it kind of duplicated its success. Number two... The Boys is ready for season two quicker than Umbrella Academy is. And that kind of lull that Umbrella Academy's had has allowed for The Boys to come in and make a major power move. And because we keep getting news about season two and characters and filming and getting shots from on set, it's kept The Boys in the news and hot. So, Brian, you mentioned the reading aspect, and that's another thing that has helped keep this series hot. A lot of people have gone and tried to pick up the back issues and pick up the trade paperbacks to read and catch up on the series. And what they're finding out is like what we've talked about on the channel, that a lot of first appearances occur in more than just issue number one, which is what's typical from an independent comic series. We're seeing major spikes on many of the early run issues that feature first appearances. And through news and photographs from the set, we already know about some characters appearing in season two who have yet to appear kind of in the early issues in the comics. And that's why we're seeing issue number seven spike. And we're also seeing people, like you mentioned, wanting to read this series, picking up those trade paperbacks. The trade paperbacks are moving for good money. So I think that there's really kind of a, a fervor surrounding the boys at this point. And for that reason, it's a, it's a hot trend, and it seems to be one that's continuing to rise. Right, so there's our three up this week. Real quick, before we get into the three down, like we always say, Comment down below. Let us know what your three hot, your three cold are. Last week we had Jeff Yonker gave us his three hot. He gave us three hot artists according to him. He was talking about J. Scott Campbell. He was talking about Jenny Friesen. He's talking about Peach Momoko. Three hot artists. Always have a following for him. So thanks for that comment, Jeff. And again, comment down below. Let us know what your three up and your three down picks are. With that being said, we're going to roll right into the three cold down picks right now starting with dc television we're talking about arrow flash titans legends of tomorrow all those comic books seem to be on the downward spiral right now well first off brian i think that is because a lot of the dc speculators who are out there trying to pick up books in anticipation for upcoming DC series and events, they're already looking at this HBO deal. We're seeing The Watchmen move. We're seeing Green Lantern move. We're seeing Strange Adventures-related books move. But we're not seeing this CW spec, and we're not seeing this DC Universe app spec really do anything on the secondary market. You and I had a conversation last week, Brian. We're both big fans of DC Comics Presents 26 as like a long-term value book, and we were both noting how like low the current sales are for that book, especially anything that's not real high grade. Um, anything mid grade to kind of low high grade is kind of massively undervalued, at least what it's sold over in kind of recent times. I mean, we've got Deathstroke on a TV show. Granted, it's about, it's our third incarnation of Deathstroke that we've seen in some form in recent years of uh, media, not counting anything animated. Um, but, Deathstroke's first appearance isn't really moving like you'd expect. Jericho first appearances aren't really moving. Um, we, we're not seeing Rose Wilson stuff move. We're not seeing um, Nightwing had its moment, but you know that isn't really moving the needle. Um, so all of that Titan stuff isn't moving. And then moving on to like Arrow and Flash. Flash currently has two of the newer created villains, Godspeed and and Bloodwork in the series and neither of those have kind of moved the market godspeed had its moment but it's kind of a long play and blood work has been kind of the main villain the last few episodes and we haven't seen really any secondary market movement as we move into crisis it'll be interesting to see if that amps up at all nope but whether what you talking about Willis? you don't think so i don't think so 
I, I wouldn't think so either. Um, there was some early heat on the Crisis books themselves, um, specifically that uh, Death of Flash book. But, you know, Green Arrow, 24, First Diggle, all of these books, they're, they're just really cold right now. They're great pickups for the PC collection if you're a fan of DC. Crisis shows. on Infinite Earth is one of the hands down one of the best stories that you could read, especially in DC. I mean, it kind of reset the universe. But I think from uh, the market perspective, I, you would have already kind of seen that because CW, DC, Warner Brothers, they've been teasing this. They've been putting all these casting announcements yep. out, and you haven't. I mean. I might be blind, but I haven't seen much movement in the market, even with all that publicity. No, it'll be interesting to see when we get to the episodes where you have Kevin Conroy show up as Batman and, and you have Black Lightning show up on the show and you have all of this happening at once if there will be any sort of major interest. But I, I don't see it either. Um, but like I said, from a collector perspective, Diggle's first appearance is one as a fan of the show that like I have to have. And I'm glad I've gotten my collection. I'm a little surprised it hasn't become more popular in the secondary market. But and the next downward trend we're seeing right now is another one that breaks my heart. But I like seeing it down because that makes it easier for me to pick up at lower prices. But we're talking about Disney comics. Yeah, you're the reason why I even really looked into this. Um, you know, Brian, you and I share in common, um, you certainly more than me, a, a passion for all things Disney. I think having children of a certain age and then growing up kids of Disney, right? We, we, we've we all kind of followed this kind of golden era of Disney with all these, you know, great 90s created and 80s created, um, you know, animated features from Aladdin to Lion King and so on and so forth. And... Now we're getting the live action versions. We just got today at the day that we filmed this, the debut of Disney Plus. Um, and the one area that this hasn't translated to seems to be the comic books. Unless you've you're talking some, about Golden Age, because there's some right, Golden Age right. Disney books that are. And well, you're talking and about the main Mickey and Friends. Like everyone that you mentioned as I far want. as Aladdin, Lion King, everything we know from our childhood, yeah, those books don't do much at all. Yeah, and that's the funny thing is I when I'm at conventions, there is a demand for Disney books. It's one of the most common questions I get asked at my booth is, you know, do you have any Disney comics? But the thing that I'm noticing is that these types of collectors, they're kind of indoctrinated into the thought of buying inexpensive books. They Even when we're talking those vintage books, whether it's gold or silver age books, they're looking for inexpensive, low-grade versions. They're happy to have those in their collections. They're completionists. And when they start talking about the modern stuff, they certainly aren't going to pay a uh, big dollar for the books. And even when you start talking about the m more recent IDW variants, there was a moment where some of those kind of spiked and had their time to think DuckTales. But I think a lot of that was kind of a false market created by speculators selling to each other. Um, and now we're seeing that become less and less popular. And those books have kind of dropped off those 1 in 10 Uncle Scrooge variants and those 1 in 10 DuckTales variants, while still popular with Disney diehards, aren't getting the same demand on the secondary market that they once did. Um, so... The interesting thing will be to see with Disney and the Disney Plus app, with it in every single home in going forward, you know, with that, the way that it's become so accessible, it's inexpensive, Verizon's giving it away for free. So, you know, there's all kinds of things out there that are going to put these movies in accessible to children. Will we see the next generation come up and have more of an importance over the comic books? That I'm not sure. But right now they're cold. I think it's, they're great PC pickups for the same reasons that I know you love them. Right. You mentioned a lot of those 1 in 10 IDWs. Um, when IDW relaunched a bunch of those titles, they actually had 1 in 25s like we talk about sometimes. Yeah. And some of those tied into like Disney, um, the parks anniversaries. And some of those still like they're not super hot, but they command decent money. Another thing we were talking about those 90s titles comics that don't sell for much. One of the things I like to do purely for my collection is find nine eight signature series but not signed by the talent from the comic book but the talent from the movie that it portrays so like i got little mermaid signed by ariel the voice of the actor for ariel beauty and the beast signed by uh bell and beast uh so those are things just from like a collector standpoint and the disney fan of me that i enjoy picking up 
So. Right, and that's a great way to amplify your Disney collection, to use a word from our channel. Um, take it to the next level, you know, is to look for those voice actor signatures. And those voice actors, they're out there at those comic conventions. So if you're, you know, if you look around enough, you, you, can, you can make that happen. Then the last downward trend we're going to talk about tonight is Dark Avengers. This is another one. Like right around D23, right around uh, San Diego, you saw heard a lot of rumors about Dark Avengers coming to MCU or Disney Plus, but they've kind of cooled off since then. Yeah, and now again, this is no shade on Thunderbolts, and this is no shade on anybody with Thunderbolts speculation, and I'm not even saying that Thunderbolts isn't going to happen. But the reason why Dark Avengers is on this list is absolutely related to Thunderbolts, because it's important if we're going to talk about the hot trends to also mention the cold trends and how they relate to each other. And Dark Avengers was red hot over the summer. I, I actually had a large stock of Dark Avengers number one. Uh, the cover A, the, the second print, the third print with the sketch, the 1 in 50 Adi Granoff variant. I was doing extremely well with these. At this point, those books are all cold. Now, they'll still sell, but they don't sell like they were in the summertime. And that's mainly because talk of the Dark Avengers showing up in a movie has kind of passed. It's moved on, and now all the attention is on the Thunderbolts. And this is what happens is you get these rumors and books shoot up. Everybody's going to conventions. Everybody's going to their LCS. They get that FOMO, and they feel like, i got to grab this now. And what ends up happening is because we had no real confirmation, as time passes and it looks like, a rumor is just that, a rumor, those books start to drop. So we bring up these books not to say that you shouldn't grab those Thunderbolts books, but that you should be cautious paying that top dollar because if there isn't any Thunderbolts news for three or four months, you will see those Thunderbolts prices drop. And that's what's the beauty of the three up, three down show is we're giving you an opportunity to look at both sides of the market so that you can make the best decision for yourself to amplify your collection. Right, and then a lot of these, if you're in there just purely for speculation, you might be missing out on some great stories because a lot of these, even though they're cold or they're hot, they're still great stories. Some of them pick them up and trade. I enjoyed the Dark yeah. Avengers storyline. Um, when I first read it, it wasn't the biggest fan of it but actually i went back and read it again and it is a great storyline i mean you got norman osborne as freaking iron patriot right right yeah i mean it's a villain avengers team yeah. you're absolutely right dark avengers is a great read thunderbolts there's some thunderbolt series that are great reads both of them uh you know if you're looking to read or if you're looking for your collection are great properties but be careful when you're speculating and that's where we always talk about the spec cycle right so there it is. There's our three up, three down for this week. Also, let us know in the comments, what are your up picks and what are your down picks? What do you like? What do you don't like? So it could be series. It could be runs. It could be artists. It could be anything. Comment down below. You never know. We might feature it on the show just like we did tonight. Also, if you haven't signed up for that Bolo Nation tech service yet, what do they need to do, Jack? Well, all they need to do is text Bolo Nation to 803 200 2720 and thank you to everybody who has joined the community so far so many of you have joined i had to go out and change the program that's why we've been a little slow on the texting over the last few days but it is about to ramp up so shout out to everybody who has joined the nation this has been three up three down we'll see you guys next week Peace.